Okay, so this video is going to generally introduce the Kantian ethics theory. I want to be pretty explicit about some things to kind of help you understand the scaffolding that Kant uses to build his moral framework. So first and foremost, um, Kant grounds his morality in reason, which is a non-natural fact. So morality, how it makes it so it's not subjective, right? From you to me to everyone in America or in Scotland or wherever. How it avoids that problem is it grounds its morality in reason, okay? I'll explain that a little bit more and give some examples of how that works. So, reason is how he grounds it. Second, um, where the morality, the good, the praiseworthy, the hopeful, whatever, and the inverse, the bad, evil, immoral, uh, where that is, is in the act itself for Kant. Now, many of you correctly identified that for Kant, it's not in the consequences like it is for utilitarianism. Uh, but a lot of you kind of slipped in and thought that it was somewhat in the intention of the agent. So to be very clear, for Kant, the morality of where the morality is, is in the action, in the act itself. So in the act of stabbing someone, in the act of uh, saving someone, not in your intention to save them, or the fact that you did save them, right, or didn't. It's the act of saving. So, it's grounded in morality. Sorry, <laughs> it's grounded in morality. Of course it's grounded in morality. Uh, it's grounded in reason. And where the morality is, is in the act itself. Now, uh, one thing that confuses a lot of people is what is Kant after? Like, the intrinsic value. So for utilitarianism, it's pretty easy to understand what it is. And that's happiness, right, or pleasure for the greatest number of people. But for Kant, it's actually autonomy or free will, the will itself. Right now, he, he calls it the good will. But the intrinsic value is autonomy. So this is how it's built, right? Very different from utilitarianism. It's grounded in reason. The morality is in the act itself. And what we're after and want to preserve is freedom or autonomy. Okay, so that's our basic scaffolding. Now, one thing that's really particular about Kant that many people find very uh, both interesting and valuable, but also somewhat puzzling, is that Kant wanted morality to be necessary. Now, just as one plus three is necessarily four, Kant wanted morality to operate like that. There's no wiggle room. There's no, if I feel like it, if I'm a good person, if the situation tells me to, if it's in my self-interest, if I can do it, or anything like that. He didn't want any kind of slippery notion or subjective idea or intention or upbringing or culture to get in the way of morality at all. He thought that morality was so important that it had to be necessary, just like it is physically necessary that if you jump, you'll come back down on planet Earth, right? That's a physical necessity. A uh, mathematical necessity is one plus one equals two. There is no other way in which it can be otherwise, right? So, very important that you understand that for Kant, morality and, mor and the moral obligations we have are of necessity, okay? Very different from other views, okay? Now, um, Kant, in his analysis on making this moral theory, he kind of outlined four different uh, ways in which someone acts, right? The motives we have for acting. 
Okay, so there, obviously there's self-interest, there's consequences, but we can act from uh, in conformity with our duty or our obligations. So the thing we happen, the thing we do, can happen to be what we ought to do, what our duty or our obligation tells us, right? But that's just kind of luck or accidental, right? And that's a problem. Now, so for example, Kant says there's many people um, who are just by nature good people and they just want to do good things because they have a, you know, a healthy, good disposition. And that's fine and all, but that's contingent. Okay. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean by contingent versus necessary. Now, a contingent thing is something that could be otherwise. So, for example, if your parents didn't get together 18, 20, 25, 30 years ago, however long it was, however old you are, and have, did a, performed a certain action on that day, you wouldn't be here, right? So, in some sense, your existence is contingent Right? Could have been otherwise. They couldn't have done, you know, they, they could have just had a glass of wine or played a game or watched a movie instead. Right? Or the fact that you are in medical school or want to be in medical school, I should say. Right? Um, or be in the medical profession. Right? That's a contingent fact about you. Uh, it could be otherwise. You could have chose to be a philosopher or be a plumber or um, an electrician or an astrophysicist, right? Those are all contingent things. Now, something that is necessary cannot be otherwise. The one plus one equals two is a necessary fact, right? Um, and so for Kant, morality couldn't be contingent. It couldn't be based upon, hopefully, that just because you're a good person or that you'll continue to be a good person, right? That's a contingent thing. It, it could, something really bad could happen to you and all of a sudden you're just like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to be this good person anymore, right? Um, so the, the human nature and human psychology, all of those different things, as good as they are in most cases, or to be optimistic, right, in most cases, uh, the fact that they are good, or that they are useful, or that they align with our moral obligations, you know, a good number of times, is contingent. And for Kant, can't have that. No room for contingent things. But, uh, morality needs to be necessary. Okay, now, so just because you're a good person and that you have a disposition or a presupposition to, you know, be good and help and be moral, doesn't mean that doesn't mean that tomorrow you won't or that you will continue to be that way. Okay, so to be very clear, for Kant, the only type of moral act that has moral worth to it are actions that come purely from duty and for no other reason, right? So just because you're a good person, you wanted to do that, or it's because of your self-interest, or because the consequences told you to, or whatever, right? All of those things, you may happen to do what you should do, but it doesn't have moral worth because you didn't do it from, uh, you didn't do it for the duties and obligations sake, right? And that's the only way to make it, according to Kant, necessary. So hopefully this is beginning to make a little bit more sense to you. Now in this next video, I'm going to explain maxims, imperatives, and a little bit more about them.